It's the last show. For that. Don't do that. 18 weeks of you I've had. I know. It's been a disaster. It's been the best time of my life. What a sad little life, Jane. These have been some of my favourite moments. Oh, we're doing that. We've come such a long way together. I remember being like, that's going to be my best mate. An anchor, a best friend, and a man who challenges me to be the best version of myself. Would you marry me? I wonder what your farts smell like. That honestly makes me want to cry. That is the nicest thing you've ever done to me, sliding into a man's wife's DMs. Don't worry, Sam, I've always got your back. To be honest with you, mate, I don't really remember it that way. Do you want to know something interesting? No, I just want to have the Guinness. There we go. I love you. What was that? <laughs> I've never seen anything less menacing than a load of little yous. Someone's got their eye on me and I've just had oh! a bad day. Oh, 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 fuck! Fuck! Oh my god, the chair! Why? Why? You dirty bastard, why? Oh, fucking Christ! <laughs> Fuck me! Watching you drink a pint makes me feel slightly awkward. Ah! Hold on, it's saying something. Sam is a bell end. But to be fair, if we do do this again, we need better props. The laptops haven't been on for fucking 18 weeks, they're absolutely pointless. No, they're not! No, they're not! D try it! Are you fucking winding me up? They're on! What's my password? Uh, Ella Ray Wise. Q titles! <laughs> Hello and welcome to Pete and Sam's Reality News with me, Sam! And me, Pete. Hello and welcome to Pete and Sam's Reality News. This is the place of the very latest in reality TV. This week, we're going to be reporting on the crumbling cock destroyers. Culture correspondent Sideman is back and he's roasting reality news. And I will be bringing you Prick of the Series in a very special episode of Pete's House of Pain. But first, for the very last time, it's our reality news headlines. Bryce Hall has nits, allegedly. TikTok heavyweight Bryce Hall has been accused of having headlights by TikTok lightweight AJ Stefano. Tick tock. After stealing Bryce's hat at a frat party and wearing it for a few days, AJ took to TikTok to tell his followers that his head was super itchy. AJ was diagnosed with a severe case of head lice and is blaming Bryce Hall, now known as Lice Hall. Serves him right for stealing someone's hat. Nix, something that runs rife through boarding school. I did have head lice, yes. Of course you did. I was once in, in biology, actually, I remember. And we had to use a comb to get them out. And then I had head lice again. You've had head lice twice? I've had a few times, actually. And uh, I uh, was having a haircut and my mum took me to Trotters. <laughs> head lice. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for that. So what we found out is that you are riddled. Series 28 of TOWIE finally ends. This series ended with Diags' 30th birthday party. And you all got together for a festival hosted by Chloe Sims, I believe, Pete. I literally turned up. Everyone was absolutely hammered. Who hooked up? Don't know. Who had a fight? Don't know. Who made up? Well, I was in the same room as Chloe Sims for the first time in seven months. And it was a roller coaster of emotions. She told me she was disappointed in me. I'd let her down. My behaviour's been a disgrace. So it really went up and down, and it ended with her saying she missed her mate. So we made up and walked off into the sunset. What we did find out was that Diags is a world record holder. He broke the world record for naming the most capital cities whilst sitting on a roller coaster. That sounds like the shittest TV of life. No, this is the shittest TV <laughs> of life. Can you at least name 10 capital cities for me? I'll strap in. Uh, Paris, Turin. What are you doing? I'm on a roller coaster. Looks there. like you're in a straitjacket. Rome, Bruges in Belgium. Brussels. What? <laughs> I don't know. OK. Sydney in okay. Australia. We haven't... Sydney is not the capital of Australia. It's Canberra. Roller coaster. Uh, Romania. Po Poland. Romania Warsaw. is a country. Warsaw. Is the capital of... In, uh, Poland. Oh, my God, I feel sick. Um, yes, no, that definitely looks like a roller coaster. Ireland! Ireland is a country! <laughs> Dublin. It's really fucking hard. Moscow in Russia. You haven't managed 10 Moscow. and you're not on a roller coaster. You're just sat down. He did 28 in one minute on a roller coaster. So, it's official, Towie is more intelligent than Made in Chelsea, despite all the millions spent on their educations. 
cock destroyers officially break up. LGBTQ plus icons Rebecca Moore and Sophie Anderson have split, meaning the cock destroyers are no more. Sophie announced the split on Twitter, saying that parting ways with Rebecca was the best choice for everyone's health and happiness. Fans are devastated by the news and have called this the breakup of a true dynasty. This is devastating news. Mm. Apparently, they're porn stars. Well, you're saying apparently like you don't know. I have not got a clue. Genuinely, I wouldn't type in cock destroyers. Would you porn. not, Sam? No. What like, would you type in? Like, I don't know, gilfs. Listen, let's not pretend that you don't, mate, because you do. I don't really. So, should we move on? Uh, so, the cock destroyers rose to fame in 2018 from a video they did saying they were cock destroyers. Why were they cock destroyers? Because it was just something they said uh, a couple of years ago, like, yeah, we're going to destroy some cock, we're cock... Oh. And then everyone seemed to love that, and then they became the cock destroyers. Question quickly, how would you destroy a cock? I imagine it's just by taking it in uh, as many orifices as you can. How would you destroy a cock? If I was up wine and dine it, probably. Romanticise the cock. I'd make it feel safe. I would let the cock talk about its feelings for once. It'd be a humbling experience for both of us. What do you imagine the cock would say to you when you're talking about feelings? I don't know. That's... Everyone thinks I'm hard, but I'm, I'm soft, really. That's yeah, soft exactly. Thing. A bit like you. Hard and veiny, but when you get inside, a bit gooey. There's a royal baby announcement. That's right. British royalty have welcomed another baby into the world. I am wasting time talking about that fucking Beatrice bird. It's not Beatrice, it's fashion royalty. Naomi Campbell. Naomi Campbell shocked fashion fans last week by announcing that she has become a mum for the first time at 50 years old. There's also been other baby news as well in the industry. Jason Derulo has had a baby boy. Do you know what Jason Derulo has called his son? No. Jason Derulo. Shut he, up. No, he hasn't. He is that guy. Shall we play Guess the Sex? We should. OK, just to remind everyone at home, missionary means that you're having a girl, doggy means that you're having a boy. Yep. I'm going to take control of Guess the Sex now. So, first up, Simon Webb. Doggy. Doggy, yeah. he's having a boy. Back Next doggy. up, Brian McFadden. Missionary. Missionary, so he's having a girl. So, so far, you've got one out of two. Last one, we've got... Louise Thompson oh, and Ryan God. Libby. So, <laughs> does Ryan shag your sister Doggy or Missionary? I don't know. I well, don't... just take a guess. I don't want to. I mean, to. you're going to be an uncle. You I... should take an interest in this, Sam. What would you like to be uh, the uncle to? A girl. You'd girl. like it to be a girl, so you would rather Ryan shags your sister Missionary? Oh, Interesting. Hey. Our main story, though, the future of reality news. With the end of Series 1 of Reality News fast approaching, Pete, you don't look very sad, we've been wondering what's in store for our favourite celebrities over the next few months. We've actually predicted quite a lot on this show, Pete. When you say we... Yeah? I... No, 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 no. Tristan cheating again. I predicted that. Kim and Kanye splitting. I predicted that. Yasmin and Lockie break up. I predicted that. Demi and Francesca Farrago. I predicted that. So, four out of four for me. Fuck all out of fuck all for you. We're going to give you guys at home some predictions of what we believe is going to happen whilst we're gone. I predict that you might get engaged to Zara. Oh, fuck because, off. Well, I'm no, just saying. Absolutely not, uh, no. Why not? I know when I want to get married. Do you know who to? Zara, yes. Oh, well, you do want to marry her. Pete Wicks making a cameo on Made in Chelsea would be quite something to behold. It's very doubtful because I'd probably end up getting more airtime than you do. I don't think I could be on Made in Chelsea, in all seriousness, because I don't think I could put up with the dribble that some of you lot talk about. I actually watched one recently. They were basically um, acting like the witches of... Oh, yes! It was Julius and Miles! Oh, oh do you know a flaming much? Shut up, you fucking pair of fucking posh bellends. Pete Wicks on Made in Chelsea coming to your screens, hopefully at some point, because I would fuck... Can't wait to turn up to the next party. As we said, we're coming to the end of the series. So what better way to celebrate than a review from our culture correspondent, Sideman, our favourite reality TV roaster. Take it away, Sideman. Yes, people, Sideman here, although I wouldn't call this culture. Here is my review slash breakdown of Pete and Sam's reality news, going over some of the best, or depending on how you look at it, worst moments that these two have been a part of. In episode five, Pete attempts to teach Sam how to sext two squidge. No, 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 no. And crafts what I consider to be quite a good text to Zara about how Sam would like to ravish her once he gets home, ended appropriately with an aubergine emoji. Sam swaps that emoji with a dancing emoji, which turns a perfect text into a reason for Zara to question his sexual orientation and the perfect way to dry up her fountain for weeks. 
In episode seven, Sam reveals that he actually consoled Theo Campbell after his breakup with Cass Crossley, as he knows him personally. This is the first time in six weeks of doing reality news that you've actually known anyone personally that we've done a story about. Conversely, I know Cass personally, and I always wondered why Theo's attempts to get her back were so moist and unmanly. Now I know it's because Theo was taking advice from Sam the Soppy Sausage Thompson. Sam does not know how to get a girl back. He only knows how to be gotten back by a girl. In episode nine, Pete reached his breaking point and replaced Sam with a sex doll. Much better. Everyone watching, please meet Steve, my co-anchor for the rest of the shows. The inanimate object actually proved to be a better co-host than Sam, forcing the producer to have serious behind the scenes talks about Sam's relevance on the show. What did you think of the Rita Royal story? I think Rita is beautiful and she can't do any wrong. You're sitting on the fence a little bit there. That's what we got rid of Sam for. Okay then, I think she's a bit of a dickhead. But ultimately, they decided to keep him on because he has more Instagram followers than the doll, which is fair enough. In episode 11, Sam attempted to lick his lips like Pete does in order to channel his inner misogynistic womanizer. No offense, Pete. Well, some offense. Sam's attempt serves to only prove to us he's definitely the too much tongue guy as he enveloped what little top lip he has, failing to look sexy and succeeding at looking like a man trying to eat food off his nose for some strange unknown reason. Fuck yeah. If you did that to someone in public, I I'm pretty sure you'd be arrested. In episode 15, Sam slides into Kim Kardashian's DMs on behalf of Pete. While Kanye's breath is still fresh on the poor girl's cheeks, he refers to her as Kimberly, making the most formal DM slide in human history. Kimberly, I come bearing tidings of joy. This sounds like a shit Christmas song. And then begins to list Pete's redeemable qualities. A few of his good qualities are downing, pints, okay from a billionaire rap genius to a pint downer. What a sales pitch. People, it's been 18 episodes of pure anarchy, but wow if it hasn't been the most glorious train wreck you've ever seen on British television. Thank you to the loyal audience that might have mistaken it for a very long commercial at first, and hopefully see you back here for season two. So how do you guys actually feel? It's been 18 episodes successfully done, depending on who you ask. I feel great. I am over the moon, it's over. Wow. Do you guys feel like you're any closer after this? Me and you are gonna be joining the hip for years and years to come. Well, we currently are joining the hip because I've got your fucking face tattooed on my hip. Yeah, what's that about? You guys didn't think, mm. When we die, I will be on you. Think about that. <laughs> think about that. When he's rotting, I will be there. This is obsessive at this point. What are you doing next series? Because you could be Pete and Sideband's reality news. Mm. You yeah. bookended the series. We started on a high with you and we're gonna finish on a, on a high. Right, well, I wanna do something that I've seen you guys do so many times, but I've never been able to be involved in. I wanna do the confetti cannon thing. Yes, yay, okay, class. Don't, so hold on, down. hold on. If we're gonna do this, I feel like we should toast. Toast to, you know, 18 great episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Three, please. two, one, let it. You are a mouse. <laughs> Yes! That is just the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. That was disastrous. And finally, it's time to announce who our prick of the series is. Last week's nominees were every prick you've had so far. You had a hell of a lot to choose from. Sam, as it's our last week, I'm gonna let you do the honours, mate. Why don't you remind us who was in the running? Well, we start off with Matt Hancock. Uh, then we got the Queen. Tattooed cat influencer, Britney's dad, Matt Hancock again. Uh, Lady Gaga's dog nappers, Piers Morgan, Pope Francis, Pete Wex, reality news viewers, uh, public litterers, Usher, Europa the Super League, and Lawrence Cox. You guys at home voted, and I honestly cannot wait to announce the winner. Jeffrey, pass me the envelope. So the winner of Prick of the Series is... Oh, fuck off. It's a fucking joke. It's me. Go on, baby! Well done, you! That's an absolute fucking well... 18 weeks of my life I've given to you. Let's get started. Why am I here? There's no way I'm doing this without you. We're a fucking duo. We're best friends. We do everything together. So there you go, you fucking helmet. What happens now? This is for not including me in more episodes. Oh! 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 Well, 
that's all we've got time for this week on Pete and Sam's Reality News. It's actually all we've got time for this series, mate. I've been Sam Thompson. Funny enough, I've been Pete. Take care of yourselves. Yeah, go on, fuck off, you bunch of freaks. Stay away from each other. Yeah. I'm so sad. I feel like it's curdling. Ugh.